Hello everybody, my tutorial today is going to be about displaying CGs in visual novels in Unreal Engine 4. And I'm going to be using um, some code I've already developed, which I call the Visual Novel Framework for UE4, uh, to demonstrate how I do it. And if you have the VN Framework from the UE4 Marketplace, then you can follow along directly. Otherwise, you can just kind of see how I've set up my system and, you know, use that information to develop your own as you wish. So to demonstrate um, displaying a CG, I'm going to be using my current project in development, Crimson Spires, which is pretty far along. But I'm going to walk you through how I display CGs in that game and um, put one in for an example. So now we're in the Crimson Spires project in UE4, and I'm going to go to um, into my VN Framework folder, Blueprints, and then Widgets. And so what I've done um, to display CGs is create a widget blueprint that I call WDCG. Open that up. And it doesn't look like a lot uh, just from its face here. Um, what I've got is a, a tiny little... Um, image here that is that can hold a lot of different images and I've labeled it over here as CG image. Um, I've clicked is variable so that I can change that variable as desired. And so where the real magic happens is uh, over here in the event graph where I've got lots of different events and functions set up to display the CG, to change the CG, um, to have transitions like fades and zooms and all of that. Um, the big one is just where I set it here, and I'm going to walk you through uh, kind of my system for telling the widget what CG to display. So what we're going to do is insert the CG um, into this kind of action sequence we have. And first I'll just bring up that scene. Um, here is the, the data table used to um, play the whole scene in the visual novel framework. And um, I'll just show you what it's like right now without a CG. So I've got basically, you know, the characters and, and all the lines showing up. I've got most things blocked out, but I want to put a CG in there. So right about here. So instead of just showing those characters, I actually want to uh, have a, a CG here of the action. So in the VN framework, we're going to go to this folder here called Gallery, and that's where I keep the blueprints related um, to the CG system. And in this, I keep a data table called the Gallery List. And this is basically where I enter each CG um, with a nickname and a category, which I use to display them in the gallery later. Um, and I can either take the texture or the sprite information. And just in case you're, you, you know, kind of new to data tables, whenever you make a data table, um, first you have to set up a struct, which is the structure that that data table is going to have. So um, here is the struct I use for this gallery data table, where you see I have the, the texture 2D, the sprite, the, the nickname string, and the category, um, which is a enumerated list. So all of that goes into making this big gallery list. So let's say I want to add in this new CG. I'm going to go uh, first import the image I want to use. Go to my CGs. You get a few little spoilers here. All right, we're going to press import. And I know already that August Jones PNG is the file I want to import. So a little information on how I prepare my textures is that there, as you can see, um, here's the image I just imported. Um, I have it in this big, large 2048 by 2048 square. And the reason for that is that um, UE4 is able to compress square textures um, and it if, if they're not a square, if they're a rectangle, then it does not compress them. So when you're making a really large game, um, like the one I'm working on now, Crimson Spires, it becomes really important to import everything as a square. 
So even though this is a 1920 by 1080 image, um, I need to import it as a 2048 by 2048 square for the best compression. So that's why I have it um, imported like that. So then we're going to take that imported PNG and we're going to go to Extract Sprites. And so what that does is it pulls out the transparency and makes a sprite um, really quickly from um, the pixels in there. So now we have that 1920 by 1080 sprite. Um, all right, so now we have that image imported. If I go back to the gallery folder, open my gallery list, now we can tell it about these textures that we want to use for the CG. So I'm going to press plus to add a new row. Um, this CG is used early in the game. I'm going to use this little button here to bump it up to the top. Um, I'm giving its row name as 2. Uh, really quickly, I, I won't get deep into this, uh, but a visual novel framework um, setting that I, I have is that the number here used for the row name corresponds with the um, persistent da data that's used to display the CG. So this tracks um, whether or not you've seen the CG and it unlocks it in the gallery. So I won't re get really deep into that right now in case you're just trying to get a general grasp of my system. But um, that is uh, important, this number over here. So I can do, I can import both the texture and the sprite. But um, the only one I really need to import is the sprite. So I'm going to go back to where I have that open. Let's see, over here. Oops. CG's August Jones. And I can just drop it in. Once I select it, I can just drop it in like that. And we want to give it a nickname. So I'm going to call it August Jones. And category, you know, these are the sort of thing you could set differently for your own game, but I have an enum list of, of characters, so this CG has August in it, so I'm going to put it in the August category. And that way it'll show up in the gallery uh, under August. All right, so that's all I really need to set up there. And now we need to go back to the scene and tell it to display that CG. So if we go to our scenes, open it back up. So we want it to display somewhere around here. Let's see, about, about here after the flash. I'm going to add a plus sign to make a new, or press the plus sign to make a new row. I'm going to bump it down to that section right about here. And again, this is uh, specific to my framework, but I will show you how this works in a second. I'm going to enter in the nickname that I just created in the gallery. So that's August Jones. As you can see here, that was the nickname I gave it. And then I'm going to add the special effect command, CG start. So what that does is um, by adding that special effect command, it's going to trigger code that will look for the nickname of the CG in the text section. All right, so real quick, let's just make sure that works. Then we'll go a little more into detail about how that's working. All right, so the CG is indeed displaying as I hoped. All right, I'm probably going to want to add some effects to it, but for now it is showing up. So I will walk you through now how I have that working. So if we go to this, the scene template BP, um, this is, you know, the big blueprint I use where all of the uh, visual novel scene um, data gets broken down. Lots and lots of code in here uh, to display each scene. So it's a bit of a monster of a blueprint. 
But where the CG gets processed, um, you can see here, like here's where each line starts to process special events um, and the next row are determined in this macro here. Then we go down here to this code. Yes, it's a bit overwhelming, I know. It, this has taken me years to develop. Um, over here we get to the code that processes um, the code in uh, any commands in the special effect column. So those are here in this macro called check special effects. Lots of different special effects that I have set up here. And if you zoom in here to the CG section, you'll see where it's breaking down that CG start command. So if it sees that command in the special effects line, then it goes here uh, to the code that, that starts the CG. So you can find that function CG start and see all of the code here that triggers the CG. There's a lot of different um, commands for special effects that are added here, but basically what it does is it creates that CG widget and um, adds it to this the scene. It also makes sure there aren't any others already present and destroys them if so. So the most important command here is this set CG init. So it pulls out the nickname that I've put in the text field and it feeds that to the CG init um, now we're back to the CG widget here. And um, it uses that name to figure out which uh, image to display. So I have another function here, um, where as you can see, it, it pulls that nickname. It finds that from the data table, that gallery list data table. It pulls out that info. It finds the sprite or the texture with a preference on the sprite and it put, puts that information back out. It also gets that um, persistent number that I mentioned, and it tells the the game, oh, uh, you've seen the CG now, so unlock it in the gallery. So that's my persistent info here that gets saved. So a lot of extra info here. Don't want to overwhelm you too much. But... Um, that's basically what's happening all behind the scenes as it unlocks that CG. And it gets that, uh, it pulls out that image that you entered into the data table, and it sets that as our image object, which if you go back here to the uh, designer, this tiny little image here, that's where the image object is getting displayed. So that is how all of this is working. And now um, to, to add some special effects, you know, I have all of this already set up um, in the framework, but um, what we can do is add some extra commands. And how I do that here is I parse out the, the string. The commands are separated by um, underscores. And so we can tell it to fade or pivot and, and all of that stuff, and it'll um, add a different effect to it. So... Let's give this a nice shake. So I'm gonna do an underscore shake, so it'll come in with a big shake. We could also add zooms to it if we want. So here in the text line, you can add optional commands to affect the uh, zoom, the X pivot, and the Y pivot. So let's say I wanted to start zoomed in a bit. Uh, the first command you add will, um, change the scale. So I want to zoom in. I'm going to try 1.8. Um, so almost twice its original size. Um, and I'm going to, you know, okay, it's going to mess up the resolution a little bit, but I'm okay with that for dramatic effect. So zoom in 1.8, and then I need to tell it what X and Y pivot. Um, I kind of want it to focus on Jones's face. So I'm going to try an X pivot of 0 0.3, so kind of over to the left. Oh, it's saving on me. Okay. And the Y, it's going to be close to the top, so 0 0.2. So I think that should be about right. So now I'm going to show my cards a bit. Um, the truth is I had already coded in this CG before. So down here you'll see commands 
where I've already told the CG to uh, change position um, with another command called CG cut. Um, I've told it to zoom and move over again. And then I end it with CG end. So those are already in there. Um, I just wanted to demonstrate adding this um, code here to display the CG in the first place. So now let's go ahead and test that out and see how it all looks. Alright, so it came in with the shake, focusing on Jones. Now here's the other code to move over to August, and then to zoom out completely. fades back out to this to the characters all right so all of that is what you do to get the CG um, to show up and have effects um, in your scenes and just to show you a little bit more here before I close up um, I will just show you where that pivot code is um, that's here in the scene template BP it takes those commands that I entered into the text field and puts them through a timeline to uh, move the, the pivot and scale. So all those commands get processed here in the scene template VP and affect um, that, that CG widget. So that concludes this tutorial on just showing you how to display CGs in the visual novel framework and to just give you an idea of how that all works. So uh, it is pretty complicated. It took me a while to set all of that up but um, I hope you find it useful. And if you're interested to learn more about my own process, um, we have a Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash woodsy underscore studio, uh, where we have weekly updates about our um, game development process and lots of previews for our upcoming game, Crimson Spires. So if you're interested in supporting our work and learning more about our process, please take a look. So thanks for watching and good luck creating.